Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And during the previous night the Ukrainians conducted massive missile strike on Crimea. As a result of uh, those attacks the Ukrainians managed to damage and to destroy the Russian airfield in the vicinity of the town by the name of Jankoy. The Ukrainian sources reported that recently the Ukrainians managed to discover uh, in the vicinity of the airfield the positions of S-300 and S-400 air defense systems. Furthermore there were some wa deep, um, warehouses and ammo depots with missiles for this type of weapon. The Russian military experts are saying that this is not the final attempt to attack from the Ukrainian side, this is just the beginning. And uh, because of that fact that Ukrainians managed to destroy a significant number, possibly managed to destroy a significant number of Russian air defense systems, very likely that during the next few days the Ukrainians will make more attempts to attack not just Crimea, but as we discussed in the previous videos, the most important target for the, for the Ukrainians, the most valuable target for the Ukrainians, is Crimean bridge that Zelensky personally promised to destroy during the previous few days when he was interviewed. Now we are moving to the north in Ukraine. We have a lot of interesting details from Chernigov as well. This morning the Russians attacked Chernigov with Iskander strike. We see just one video. The strike uh, just took place a few minutes ago before I start making the video. Uh, we have a lot of uh, ambulances arrived in the area. Uh, the sources reported that the Russians attacked the hotel hotel in the town and very likely the Russians destroyed another concentration of forces of some foreign uh, volunteers or something like this. Now we are moving to Kharkiv. We have a few more, uh, let's say, strikes and a few more destroyed Ukraine multiple launch rocket systems in the vicinity of Lipsy. The Russian reconnaissance forces managed to discover the concentration of multiple launch rocket system vampires and ammo depots. And as a result of Iskander strike, that concentration of forces was destroyed, including the ammo depots and warehouses. Then we're gonna see we see the secondary detonation and very heavy explosions. Uh, furthermore, the Russians continue suppressing the Ukrainian position in Kharkiv, uh, preparing themselves before further offensive operation in this direction. And today we got uh, the video from Kharkiv itself. On this video we can see uh, the process of blackout. This is not like the blackout as a result of another strike. This is like controlled blackout when uh, when the time, when the night comes, the Ukrainian authorities themselves turned off electricity in the town, trying to save uh, the facilities and to uh, stretch the work of the systems as long as possible. Now we are moving to the situation on the ground and first we are going to talk about Chasavyar. Currently we still haven't received any geolocations or any videos confirming that the Russians during the previous few days of clashes managed to reach the Seversky Donetsk and Bas Canal. The Ukrainian sources are saying that it's very likely that that was a mistake by the Ukrainian author who published the video. Also the Ukrainians are saying that it's very likely those positions were Ukrainian positions and maybe there was a case of friendly fire or the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine were under fire uh, of uh, armed forces of Russian Federation. So for now, but for now we are going to keep this map at, until we receive some geolocations from here. Uh, for now let's keep it like this. Uh, furthermore, we still haven't received any geolocated confirmations uh, that the Russians managed to answer Chesovyar itself, but we continue receiving the videos from the Russian side of how they were bombing and FPV droning the Ukrainians in this part, which confirms that there are still no Russians in the eastern part and this part, but there are still Ukrainian positions. Furthermore, we got a report that uh, the Ukrainians and um, Sirsky himself decided or tried to send the forces of the 3rd um, Storm Brigade to Chasavyar. I remind you that the last time the 3rd um, uh, Assault Azov Brigade um, we saw in Krasnogorovka and Avdeevka. First, um, the Ukrainian author military authorities sent the 3rd Brigade uh, to uh, Avdeevka with the purpose to stabilize the situation and to maintain the corridor for evacuation of the forces and later Sirsky sent to Krasnogorovka before when the Russians just started offensive and now Sirsky decided try to send uh, the third Azov Brigade to Chesavyar but according to information we have uh, they refused to carry out Sirsky order to relocate to Chesavyar so they understand that the days of Chesavyar are numbered and they just don't want to have additional losses. Now we are moving to Avdeevka direction and we received during the previous night significant updates uh, from the Russian side according to information we have according to 
different mappers, including pro-Ukrainian mappers and neutral mappers, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish complete control over the residential area between the railways. The Russians managed to improve their positions further and to enter the village by the name of Achiretina. Maybe this is not a village, even it's already a town, as I understand. Very big, more or less big town with high-rise area, with, um, let's say, railway station. So this is very important logistic hub for armed forces of Ukraine. And according to information we have, the Russians managed to capture the first buildings of the first street, Ivanova Franka Street, on the southeastern part of the stronghold. And according to this information, we can make a conclusion that Ukrainians in Nova Bakhmutovka already appeared in operational encirclement. Just to remind you that, uh, for example, yesterday we have already discussed the Russians bombing and attacking on the Ukrainian positions on the villages and town that located behind Nova Bakhmutovka. So the Russians are trying, let's say, to pin the Ukrainians down and not to allow them to redeploy additional reinforcement. So we, based on these videos, based on these geolocations and updates of different mappers, we can make conclusion that very likely today the Russians will try to attack Nova Bakhmutovka from two directions with the purpose to establish complete control over the territory and to force the Ukrainians to fall back from this area completely. If the Russians are able to do this, if the Russians are able to capture Nova Bakhmutovka, this will lead to complete collapse of Ukraine defense belt in the fields between Berdychi, Semenovka, Umanska, Novopokrovska and um, so the situation, as you can see, is getting worse and worse. Let's wait what is going to be today. Furthermore, we got uh, more details and updates from Pyrvomaiska direction. Today we got some geolocations and some map updates uh, from Syriac. He reported that the Russians, as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, managed to establish complete control over these uh, trenches, fortifications and the strongholds in the fields between Nivoyska and Umanska. Nivoyska and Pervamaiska. The Ukrainians have already started the process of withdrawing their troopers to Karlovka. Currently, we can't tell for sure whether the Ukrainians are able to evacuate the entire let's say group of soldiers in this area or there are some group of Ukrainians will be encircled by the Russians. Anyway, the clashes continues and today obviously we're going to receive the final confirmation of a complete clearing of this artillery pocket. Now we are moving to Krasnogorovka. As you can see, we have adjusted the map based on the geolocations and videos we received during the previous 24 hours. We have some updates on the map by different mappers, but let's take a look at this video. Uh, most of the mappers, every single mapper, not most of the mappers, but every single mapper made the changes of their of his own map in Krasnogorovka based on this video. Uh, what can we see on the video? For example, we can see another uh, attempt of attack with the turtle tank. The turtle tank was moving from southern part of Krasnogorovka to the central part of Krasnogorovka. As we can see, uh, there were almost no resistance from the armed forces of Ukraine. The Ukrainians were trying to probably to attack the tank with mortar systems, but with a very light type of weapon. We don't see any FPV drones flying above the area. We don't see any explosions. We see no barrier and no resistance and how the Russian turtle tank was moving from the southern part to the central part. This is this video is amazing and for example on this second on the one minute and 20 second we can see that uh, the area the final the final destination point where the turtle tank managed to get and after that the turtle tank uh, start moving back towards the mainland and successfully returned back so based on the video most of the mappers have already updated their maps showing that every single let's say building every single street every single square meter in this area is already under the russian control but of course it's not like this it's not we need to understand and I would like to explain to you what I saw in this video. Uh, first of all, uh, to understand the situation, it's better to increase the numbers of dates uh, since the 17th, 16th of April and once again to discuss this Russian offensive operation. It's not offensive operation, but I would like to explain to you what um, can we see on this map. As I understand, most of you have already seen this video and this is the another wave of attack of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation and most of the, uh, every single map used this video to adjust the area, uh, let's say territory control of the Russian forces in the southern country Krasnogorovka and so on and most of the mappers were saying that right right in front of your screens we can see the Russian offensive operation but telling the truth this is not offensive operation because uh, during the entire video we wouldn't see even a single let's say battle between the Russian and Ukrainian soldiers on the ground on this video we can see the redeployment of forces from the mainland 
inside of southern part of Krasnogorovka. And obviously this is not offensive, this is completely different situation. Offensive and redeployment is two different things. Offensive is the clashes with the purpose to force the enemy to fall back. And redeployment is the operation to, let's say, accumulate, concentrate forces, for, to move one the forces from one area to another with some different purposes like concentration of forces and many many other so basically on this video that we discussed yesterday we see not an offensive operation but concentration of forces for further offensive operation so during that video we might see how the russians were concentrating the russian soldiers along this line significant number of armored vehicles with few waves of attacks with few waves of redeployment probably the russians managed to concentrate up to two uh, 200 soldiers in this area and this is the critical mass so the previous video that we just seen watched was the video of concentrating the critical mass on the southern part of Krasnogorovka with the purpose to start offensive operation further let's say to cross the railways and to enter the central part of Krasnogorovka and now let's discuss based on these new updates uh, new things that we have just discussed let's try to understand what was the real purpose of this um, Russian tank attack or not tank a tank but that was reconnaissance in combat so uh, most of the mappers once again updated this map showing that this area is already in the Russian control but it's not true you need to understand that every single building in this area every single building that was located along the road of this tank movement was completely fully loaded with let's say Ukrainians the only question is why the Ukrainians didn't attack the tank and probably the simple answer is that first of all they didn't want to reveal their own positions second one basically they didn't have weapons Happen, uh, to do this let's say to uh, to destroy this tank this turtle tank and uh, that's it and that's it so that's why the russians sent this tank with one purpose to discover the ukrainians to force the ukrainians to attack it was like it was like a trap for the ukrainians with the purpose to force them to discover their own positions because on the southern part of Krasnogorovka, the Russians have already concentrated up to 200 soldiers and they were waiting, they were following this tank, trying to understand where exactly the Ukrainians are located in the central part. And after the Russians realized that the Ukrainians decided not to reveal own positions, they allowed the Russian tank to leave this area. And when tank left, now the Russians start thinking how to attack the central part. So central part is not under Russian control. Central part is in the gray zone or under Ukrainian control the russian tank was moving here just with one purpose to discover the ukrainian positions and now the russians on just today or maybe tomorrow and maybe yesterday in the evening they started or will start offensive on this direction so obviously regarding the whether it was reconnaissance in force or let's say attempt to attack it's important that the most interesting updates are going to come today we're going to receive today. Nova Mikhailovka, the sources reported that the Russians managed to improve their positions for additional 100 meters to the west, and the sources reported that uh, currently there is just one you know, let's say stronghold in the eastern part, in the western part of Novomikhailovka, just one point with probably maybe 15 or 20 soldiers. The rest of Novomikhailovka is already in the grave zone. Furthermore, we got reports that the Russians launched an offensive operation from Vladimirovka to the north with the purpose to, uh, let's say, to cut this artillery pocket, to cut this salient. And according to information we have, the Russians managed to improve their positions and establish control over additional square meters on this direction. So today we're going to see probably more updates from the territory and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye